ask you to give up things I just wanna give you all I can There's something about you, baby, and I can't get enough There's something that you give me, and I can't get enough You don't need to tell me that you love me I don't mind waiting for it to show Jeep Patriot. Now when you think of Jeep, you might think of big, cumbersome 4x4s that cost a fortune to run and are very unreliable. However, that might not necessarily be true. I'm going to try and prove that this is the best car you can buy for £2,000. Where else can you get all your mates in five seats and do 50 miles per gallon on a run? Something that you give me and I can't get enough Ooh, yeah. Don't tell me I don't stand a chance Ooh, yeah. For you I'll be a different man Ooh yeah This is where I'm meant to be Ooh yeah, ooh yeah So I wanna stop Still I lose on where you are I like many of the sort of car reviews where people drive around a track for five minutes or they take one you know, a field and they go oh this is rubbish compared to a Range Rover or something I've actually owned this car for two years or near two years. I've done 18,000 miles in it. I've driven it across the country, back, forwards, roundabout. So think of this as like a long-term owner's review. And I'll try and cut back to bits of video uh, that I've filmed and bits of, you know, things that I've done over the years that prove that this is a great car. Here we go. <laughs> Number one, firstly, it's a 2009 car, it's 10 years old, it's in green. I think it still looks quite modern. Compared to all the other Jeeps, it's still got the slatted grille, so it looks like part of the Jeep family, even though it is sort of known as the sort of the baby Jeep. However, they haven't put one of the very unreliable Jeep or other Dodge engines in it. They've done something very sensible and they've gone to Audi and they've got the two litre turbo diesel from Audi producing 140 brake horsepower. That's not a lot, but it is definitely enough in this. It's great, it gets, gets me everywhere, it does everything I need it to do. Inside the cabin, super comfortable. Got two armrests here. Big, comfy. It's very, very comfy to sit in. Heated seats, another brilliant thing. Also, Jeep's done something really, really clever with the back seats. They've elevated the front seats slightly and put them on sort of legs. So the people in the back can get their legs the whole way underneath your seat and gives a lot more space to the people sitting in the back. Very, very clever thing. See, Jeep aren't unreliable so far. Audi engine, good. Comfortable, clever interior. So I hold you tightly, never let you go or let you down. There's something but you, baby, and I can't get enough. There's something that you give me, and I can't get enough. Under the bonnet, it has a two litre diesel engine made by VW or Audi more specifically, and that's very reliable. Very unlike Jeep to put something German in an American car. Anyway, it accelerates 0 to 60 in about 9 seconds, which is pretty quick for nine on 2 tonnes of solid metal. And also, on a run, it will do 50 miles per gallon. Around town, it's not very good. It'll probably do 25, 30, something like that. Then on the motorway, it switches out of four-wheel drive, um, and it actually becomes very reliable. Like, it's the same engine you find in a VW Golf or something similar to that, like an Audi A3. Um, so very, very good. A big tick on that, on that point. Don't tell me I don't stand a chance for so yeah For you I'll be a different man Oh yeah This is where I'm meant to be Oh yeah, oh yeah So I wanna stop Stay in the loser with you Now you might think just because 
this is the sort of the Wrangler's younger brother. This is very much a toy off-roader, and you'd be wrong. However, I must concede that it doesn't have the loaded gearbox that a Wrangler has. It hasn't got the acres and acres of ground clearance. It hasn't got diff locks. That's all very well and good, but how often do you really use that stuff? Okay, fine, if you're crossing, you know, some desert somewhere, then you maybe you will. But if you're just using it as an off-roader in the UK, you don't really need that sort of stuff. But what this do, does have is some very, very clever electrics, and they've done me fine, as you can now see. However, as many people are now picking up on, there was one time I did get very, very stuck, as you can see here. And basically, the funny story is that I just put the new tyres on the car and stick it into Oxfordshire with my mate Alex, and we were basically um, off-roading. We basically pushed it way too far, got it completely stuck, and we had to go and ask the local farmer if he would come and tow us out, of which he very kindly did, and it really did show the power of those gators. situation and that was the first opportunity where you did need the low gearbox high ground clearance everything I didn't have however that was on one one opportunity or one case surfing trips also it makes a huge huge space way wider the back than a defender meaning that you can get way more stuff in it as you can see from the following photos I've put motorbikes in the back all sorts sheds literally everything all my tools and it's been super 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 useful so this car is almost like another attachment on a pen knife for me it's so useful day to day that it's sort of it's paid itself back in terms of only costing two thousand pounds I know it's more expensive to run than certain other cars but you get so much, so much for your money. For £2,000, you get a crazy amount of car. Four-wheel drive, leather seats, full limited interior, 50 miles per gallon, diesel. It is a super, super car. Cool. See? Capable. Thank you. 